You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson beginning in the next segment. I want to continue a little bit about civil asset forfeiture and where these guys are hanging out. We talked about what's going on at the state level. As I pointed out, I don't think that we're going to see any reform at the federal level. And let me tell you why. They know that this is starting to hit the public airwaves. They know that people are starting to pay attention to this outrage they call civil asset forfeiture. They've been doing this for over 20 years, but people are starting to pay attention now. So you got people like Eric Holder saying, well, you know, we're going to do something about this. And, and understand that this is also... We see this manifested in many different ways. It's also the war on cash, where they don't want anybody having cash, where they accuse you of structuring your deposits, where they accuse you of having suspicious activity if you take $5,000 in cash out of the bank after having already scrutinized every penny that you put in and reporting suspicious activity. If you put in large amounts, they report it when you take it out. I guess that way they can alert the NSA to start watching your movements more carefully since they can't follow every transaction that you do with a credit card. You might be paying cash, so let's watch this guy really carefully. That's the kind of paranoid police state that we're living in now. But of course, Eric Holder has heard your concerns and he's going to do something to rein this in. Listen to this new policy that they have. In the absence of criminal charges, judicially authorized warrants to seize bank accounts involved in structuring can only be obtained if the prosecutor first develops probable cause of federal criminal activity and that determination is approved by a supervisor. What? What's going on with that? I mean, you're telling me that you don't have to convict anybody before you take their cash. You don't have to go to a judge. You don't have to get a search warrant. You don't have to get a guilty verdict. You just have to say, well, I've got probable cause. They got probable cause for everything. Everything is probable cause. And all they have to do is get their supervisor who is going to uh, profit from the money that they confiscate, who's going to profit from the uh, cars that they confiscate. And again, this is not just the war on drugs. This is structuring. This is suspicious activity reports. It all began with the war on drugs, but it's metastasized way beyond that. They can take your cash. They can take your property. They can take anything. All they have to do is get approval from a supervisor. That's the test anymore. And of course, we have Rand Paul's FAIR Act that would take that down. Rand Paul, as I played in the last... Um, in the last hour, I played what he said at Bowie State. He really sincerely understands what the problem is. And he's going to probably announce tomorrow that he's going to be running for president. Uh, articles up on the Drudge Report, Washington Post, Rand Paul seems to stray from his libertarian roots as he courts a GOP base. Yes, of course, a lot of us are concerned about the overtures that he's making to the warmongers within the Republican Party. I think he needs to transcend it. Of course, you can't. The problem is you can't get... Uh, the nomination without uh, having that warmongering or at least some of the warmongering vote. But um, uh, that's the sad state of two-party politics. And of course, they make sure that we only have two parties that we can choose from. That's how they control us. That's how they appear to give us a false choice. But of course, they say that uh, on both national security and on cultural fronts, in other words, because he's come out and said that he uh, stands with uh, Christians on religious persecution, that that has alienated his base. Well, I don't think that it has alienated his base that much. Perhaps the national security thing, the real thing that is going to uh, tell us where Rand Paul and any of these other people stand is going to be the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnerships, those trade agreements that are not trade agreements. They are sovereignty destroying agreements being negotiated in secret Public is not allowed to see it. Our elected representatives are not allowed to see it. They're fast tracking it through. They're going to push this multi thousand page legislation through without any modification or oversight. That's where we need to look out. That's where we need to be careful. And of course, you've got Jeb Bush waiting in the wings, doubling down on his love of the NSA. Not much of a choice, is it? Stay with us. We're going to be back. We're going to talk to Paul Joseph Watson. 
Stay with us right after the break. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The experts are clear. Sunlight, purified water, healthy non-GMO food, and having a good attitude is essential to a healthy immune system. But I go further with super nascent iodine X2 from InfoWarsLife.com. 50% stronger than our original and revolutionary nascent iodine formula, coming from a deep earth crystal source that no other supplier has. Most other forms of iodine come from seaweed in areas plagued by Fukushima and other contaminants. Not our iodine, it comes from over 200 100 million year old crystal salt deposits and is tested and proven to be completely pure. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. See the informational videos. Read the information they're compiled. And for a limited time, when you use promo code NOW at checkout, you get an additional 5% off the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products. Secure your Survival Shield X2 today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Monday, April 6, 2015. We're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson. We've got him on the line from the UK. I'm going to talk to him about uh, this Rolling Stone rape case and the implications that it has for journalism. Uh, and before we get to that, I want to get a quick comment from him on this uh, story that's up on Infowars.com today. Top cop in Virginia says insulting someone on Facebook can get you arrested. We've got a lady who is um, facing up to a year in prison and a $2,500 fine for a picture that she posted on Facebook. I don't know where it stops. Of course, it never stops. The tyranny always ratchets up to another level, no matter how oppressive, no matter how absurd it gets. There's always another level they can ramp up to. Before we go to Paul, I just want to let you know that we've got our first run of oil of oregano at InfoWars Life. This is a high-quality, potent form of oregano that's on the market. Of course, this goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. They've been using this to strengthen the body's natural systems to enhance your overall health. But we've got this in easy capsules, so you don't have to... Uh, have the burning liquid because it does burn if you squirt it in your mouth in liquid form. So it's one of the few things that we've got that's in capsule form. It's a new nutraceutical grade oil of oregano that's now available at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. That's oil of oregano, our first run of that in capsule form. Let's go to uh, Paul Joseph Watson right now. Paul, thank you for joining us. Good to be back, David. 
Now, I want to talk to you before we get to the uh, s situation that's going on with Rolling Stone and uh, UVA. Uh, this situation on Facebook about insulting somebody and, and getting arrested for that. Give us your comments on that. Yeah, this was a woman who got into an argument with somebody on Facebook. It was actually a case of mistaken identity. So, it, you know, the argument got heated. This one woman responded with an image of herself, and, you know, a selfie with a gun and basically said, this is what I actually look like if you want to come and get me. Obviously, it was a dumb comment to make. But they responded by arresting her, and now she faces a misdemeanor, uh, several months jail time if convicted, or a $2,500 fine. Now, the, the issue was not whether this was a dumb comment. It obviously was. Whether it required her to be arrested and charged with a misdemeanor, that sounds patently ridiculous. But what's most chilling about this story is the comments made by this police representative in Virginia who told the New York Daily News, quote, Free speech doesn't say you have the right to insult anybody. And then he also said that swearing on Facebook, social media, or the internet was the same as disorderly conduct in public. So he was basically making the case that swearing I, I think... on Facebook or insulting somebody on Facebook was a crime that should lead to arrest. I think that's going to shut down uh, Google if they uh, put that in. <laughs> I mean, the comments on Google, Google is uh, one of the most... Uh ruthless and rude places for comments I've ever seen in my life, far worse than Facebook. So, I mean, there goes uh, YouTube if we were to allow something that silly. Well, yeah, obviously they could never enforce such a ridiculous right. law because this is not about enforcement. It's about creating that chilling effect where you're afraid to say anything on social media. I mean, we've had cases even in the UK the past couple of months where, for example, a journalist made a joke about somebody who raised a Pakistani flag above a town in England, and he called the police on her for inciting racial hatred. So there, are, there have actually been police investigations on, you know, politically incorrect speech. But then in America, you have several cases over the past couple of years where it's basically teenagers making dumb comments, sarcastic comments and jokes, which they could never properly mean. For example, there was a rapper, an 18-year-old rapper, I believe he was, Cameron D'Ambrosio, who basically posted some rap lyrics on Facebook, which could be seen as violent, he was arrested. There was an 18-year-old woman who was sent to jail after, quote, lolling about a hit and run and a DUI on Facebook. So it's basically distasteful comments that get flagged, get reported to police. And instead of ignoring them and focusing on real crimes, they actually go after these dumb teenagers who make stupid comments on Facebook and arrest them and in some cases charge them. Yeah, as you pointed out in the uh, subtitle, the uh, cop said there's no such thing as a petty crime. I think, Paul, one of the best things that we have in terms of shutting this kind of over-the-top nonsense down, because it's not going to be shut down by our elected officials, certainly not in Washington. I, I don't know that we can really count on too many, even at the state level. I think we need to have juries. We need to have fully informed juries who are going to say, all right, so yeah, she did, uh, okay, harassment by computer. Uh, but you're going to send her to jail for a year and fine her $2,500? Uh, no, not guilty. And just shut that kind of stuff down. That happened during alcohol prohibition. It's happened in the past. That is the purpose of the juries, to ultimately stand against intrusive and unconstitutional, unreasonable punishments, unconstitutional laws at both the state and the federal level. I think that's really about the only way that we're ever going to have protection from this because it just gets more and more absurd. That would be a sensible step, but it's it's not one that they're taking. I remember right. um, Brandon Raub a couple of years ago, the, the veteran, he made some comments on Facebook which were in the context of the Illuminati card game and other games that he was playing, I believe it was with his brother, which could be taken as violent if you applied them politically, even though the context wasn't political. He was literally abducted by FBI police and Secret Service, detained in a psychiatric facility for a week. Nobody really knew where he even was for a week. He finally got released. But again, that was perhaps the most egregious example of how comments taken out of context by law enforcement authorities are treated as terrorist threats. And then people are arrested. I mean, there was a case in Britain where somebody made a joke about bombing, as in, you know, the, the, the sense of bombing, having fun um, in relation to a flight. And they got thrown in jail for 10 years. 
Well, let's not forget. Uh, how far they're taking this. Let's not forget the case of Barrett Brown.